Happy New Year, and welcome to another episode of Back Issues, the last one of the year. You didn't tell me this was going to be the New Year's episode. I would have dressed up as a baby. Oh, you could have been the New Year's <laughs> baby. Yeah, that would be great. I think a lot of fans would have enjoyed seeing you in a diaper, let me tell you. We, about like eight or nine years ago, covered Flashpoint, and here we are again with Flashpoint Beyond. No, no, we already did this. Yeah, no, this is this is very different from. Well, no, it's a, it is a sequel <laughs> to Flashpoint. This is a lot of things, actually. Mm -hmm. This is the sequel to Doomsday Clock. What? The what? sequel to Doomsday Clock and Flashpoint? Yes. How? Oh, well, I it's guess it's by just, Jeff Johns. Right, it's Jeff Johns' next thing after Doomsday Clock. Well, Therefore, and, it is a sequel. And he wants it to be inexorably connected to the right. fallout of Doomsday Clock and but everything associated. This is the most important thing I wrote so far. Yes, yeah. yes. And even though DC had literally been working on... And moving away from it. Mo oh, completely. Well, <laughs> after the book took two years to come out, they had to figure out something else. And Warner Brothers was acquired by AT&T. And then they were like, hey, can you make like an event or a story that is also named after our awesome 5G cellular coverage? And Didio's like, yes, I can do that. <laughs> I will do that. That is happening. Well, there's five generations of DC and- Are uh, there? Sure. <laughs> if I say there are. <laughs> and I declare it. And so there it is. And everyone was like, that fucking sucks. They're like, well, everybody who thinks that sucks isn't making a book for 5G. Also, sexy headlines, Black Batman, gay Wonder Woman, <laughs> and new Superman. How about that? 5G. And then they were like, uh, that's fucking canceled because coronavirus. And they were like, oh, okay. But I took at ts dick and I put it in my mouth already. <laughs> well, then that means you blew at t And you just get to live with that forever. But no. For no reason. Yeah. yeah. But we also paid for all this art and stuff. So let's like, let's like repackage it and call it something else. Oh, no. So that became Future State. And Jeff Johns was like, fuck all that because mm. I used to be in charge of DC and I literally made DC all about Doomsday Clock. This is the biggest thing ever. And then like- uh, I mean, it was huge news when it was relevant. Yeah, well, and also he was in charge. And that's the thing is about, about Flashpoint is that like Flashpoint was a big deal because he was in charge and he wrote it. And he was able to go like, Flashpoint everybody, fucking Flashpoint. And like, it's funny, because a lot of revisionist history will tell you that Flashpoint is a big deal. And in fact, DC expected Flashpoint Beyond to sell fucking great. And, meh. Hmm. Because it's a sequel to Flashpoint, which in and of itself didn't sell great. Yeah. <laughs> it only is remembered and celebrated because it ushered in the New 52. Now, we're like 10 years removed from it, and everyone's like, um, you know what, actually, about the New 52? Wasn't that great? It was like a lot of poor planning. And I'm like, oh, you don't fucking say. Because I remember saying it in 2011, being like, uh, it looks like you have no plan and no roadmap. It hey, shut the fuck up, yeah. Sal. How dare you? Uh, this is a gateway into a new readership, okay? And I, I'm i actually like, really excited to get on the ground floor of something new, okay? You, know, you don't get it. You, you don't, don't get what they're yeah. trying. Oh, Look how okay. well selling. You're Grandpa. saying it sucks? And so when Flash Went Beyond came out, everyone was like, remembered it being a big effing deal. And so even though Dark Crisis, which was the next DC crisis after Dark Knight's Death Metal came out, they were like, release it at the exact same time. How about literally two crises happening concurrently? But this one's a Wait. hyper time crisis, so it's okay. But we just had the Antichrist. There was not supposed to be any more crises. This one was competing with, running alongside, if you will, like <laughs> the Flash, the Dark Crisis, which at least was being built up by other things and other creators. This one just shows up because after Jeff Johns no longer became an employee or an executive at DC, he just became a contractor. Like, he created his own production studio that DC hires to make comic books. So, like, mm. they hire him as an independent contractor, like, make Flashpoint Beyond. Well, what do you want to make? Three Jokers and, like, Flashpoint Beyond. Those are Jeff Johns' subcontracted books. DC doesn't go, like, I, I want it to be... No. Right. Well, I won't write those. No, you come to me for my material. Yeah, right. exactly. You hired me to make this. I made it. Here it is. No right. notes. Well, this is part of the DC, like, oh, anyone can just write whatever. Yeah. And it may or may not tie well, in. Well, and that's Who the thing. Is, and this will completely and utterly undermine the Dark Crisis. <laughs> and was that, was that Jeff Johns' goal? <laughs> no, because here's the thing. Jeff Johns is saying fuck you to a couple of people with this. But I don't think it's Joshua Williamson making Dark Crisis. 
I think it's an unfortunate coincidence that Dark Crisis was being executed around the same time that they finally finished Flashpoint Beyond and released it. Mm. But it also needs to happen after Dark Crisis because mine has to be more important. So like a little fuck you. Maybe like a flip of the bird. But like <laughs> it's not a straight up fuck you. But after Dark Knight's Death Metal and they said that we're living in an omniverse where everything matters. Right. Jeff Johns has something to say about that. When did this uh, When did this come out? How far in the past are we? Right. Is How, this like last week or? This was like, <laughs> like three months ago. Okay, all right. Okay, so this, this is, is very recent. recent. It's hot off the presses, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Flashpoint Beyond is. Crackling with energy. It is, like, it, it, what's sad is, so like this dropped, Dark Crisis dropped, they're running concurrently. At the time of this recording, Dark Crisis will end and this has a trade paperback mm. but also it happens it happens after literally there's there's text in here that says two days after the dark crisis just want to make sure I'm wow. 48 hours past what you just did but d but it hasn't ended yet that's right does so, he know how it's going to end he or he just or it just doesn't matter okay yes he does okay. but only in the vaguest sense but also mm. doesn't shy away from spoiling it Oh my god. Oh, now that, that being hurts. said, I mean like look, it's a crisis, the heroes are involved. We know that like good wins at the end of the dark crisis right, because sure. like it's a comic. Yeah, that's not a spoiler. It's I not guess. like, "Oh yeah, and then it's forever evil again." <laughs> Remind I'm us done. about Flashpoint. This was when the Flash goes back in okay. time to save his mom. Yeah, it's context time. Flashpoint. Barry Allen goes back in time, saves his mom. It makes the Flashpoint universe. And then Eobar Thawne dicks around with Barry Allen. Barry Allen now no longer has powers. He bumps into Thomas Wayne Batman because in this reality, Bruce Wayne is gunned down in the alley and Martha and Thomas survive. And then Thomas hunts and kills Joe Chill and then becomes Batman and takes it out on all of Gotham, on all the world his rage and misery and anger at the loss of his son. His wife, Martha, takes a slightly different turn <laughs> in that uh, the loss of her son drives her mad. And uh, through a series of unfortunate events that we may cover someday, uh, she gets her uh, face and hair bleached and becomes the Joker. <laughs> She right. arcums it up in a different way. Yes, or which I is pretty cool that. that like she is the Joker. It's one of the few Azarello stories I actually enjoy. But so Thomas is Batman, Martha is the Joker, and that's their story. At the end of the Azarello story arc that was a tie-in to Flashpoint, they uh, they reconcile briefly when Thomas reveals, after having met and rescued Barry Allen and repowered him and whatnot, that the life they're living is a lie. The reality is fake. It shouldn't exist. It's rewritten reality. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you. Yeah, we're going to fix this. You shouldn't be like that. We should actually be dead. And mm -hmm. Bruce survives. And she's like, that's wonderful. Like, I, I would rather be dead than this. In the miniseries that is kind of like an explanation or deepening of Thomas Wayne's decision to help Barry, he's like, I don't know if I should help Barry and unmake this reality without your permission. Because I'm doing it for our son, it should be our decision. So we're like basically being parents of this reality itself. <laughs> and so she's like, yeah, fucking kill this reality, I'm down. What happens to Bruce? And he's like, <gasps> he follows in his father's footsteps. And she goes, oh, he becomes a doctor? And he's like, not exactly. And <laughs> she's like, could be a surgeon <laughs> if you want to do yeah, it. Or a safe cracker or a concert <laughs> penis. And she loses it and runs away and falls in the cave and dies. And he's like, mm, I don't remember well, any of that. whatever. <laughs> well, you're gonna well, die I'm anyway, still so getting one's rid of it. Uh, yeah. One's dying, one's being unmade. Well, <laughs> you know. Well, she dies and then is unmade. Does it really make a difference if you're dead before you're unmade? I think it does. Be, well, be here's the thing. Yes, in the DC universe, because if you are unmade, there's a chance you could be remade someplace else. Right, which is what yeah, happens to Tom Wayne. If you're right? dead, yeah. you get to go to the afterlife. Does that also get unmade? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, because the afterlives and New Genesis and Apocalypse are all rebooted too, so it's like, yeah, why not? Okay, so you could still get remade, spiritually. Yeah, but only if, like, God approves it. What happened after that? Well, you know, Barry uh, went back in time and then let his mom get killed by Erebar Thawne, the reverse Flash, and then the New 52 happened, and then Jeff John's like, fuck the New 52, and made Rebirth, and then right. Tom King is like, fuck all that, and made Heroes in Crisis, and ran the Batman line for a while in his run, 
Thomas Wayne Batman returns right. Right. from the Flashpoint reality. I forgot that was Tom King. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was, yes, because the button happens as a result oh, right, of uh, right. the, the, the delays in Doomsday Clock. And like, we need a miniseries to fill the time and remind people this is important. So how about tachyons, buttons, and Flashpoint? So Batman and Barry go back in time in the button, and they bump into Thomas Wayne, and he's like, don't be Batman. Batman is for me, and it's bullshit. Be happy, have a son, move on. And he- That's what Thomas Wayne is saying to Bruce. Yes. Right? yes. It's like, but, don't be Batman. I was Batman first. Yeah, exactly. Fuck you. Right, but I'm your father, and I'm telling you not to be Batman. Bruce, I am your father. I am your father. <laughs> but then he gets so pissed about it, he jumps realities and ends up in the prime Earth and then concocts an entire elaborate scheme in which he's going to like prove to Bruce that being Batman sucks and like tries to ruin his life. Or at least prove that Batman would ruin his life. Also, right. you're not you even a real talk dad. Out of it. Yeah. You're a fucking fake dad. But <laughs> I guess Bruce is thinking about it from the perspective of Barry went back in time and rewrote time. That is my dad resurrected in an alternate timeline. Right, but yeah, your dad like warped reality. and twisted by your own death. Yes, so, so like, it's like that sucks. Not him at his best. Exactly. <laughs> so that that Tom King run ends, and that and, and he is he is arrested and put in Arkham, and that's the end of it. Until Joshua Williamson's Justice League Incarnate and the Infinite Frontier, in which that Batman Thomas Wayne joins a team of heroes, and Thomas Wayne gets Omega sanctioned by Darkseid. He's ashes. That's the end of it. Right. But now, in Flashpoint Beyond, he's back in the Flashpoint reality. Okay. Like, he wakes up at his desk, drunk, and being like, well, what the fuck? I was just ashes. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember fucking with Bruce in the Tom King run and being Omega sanctioned by Darkseid. And I remember, like, after the button, doing the Tom King run and people being like, is that the same fucking Batman? And then, after the Tom King run, seeing Flashpoint Batman show up in Justice League Incarnate and being like, is that the same fucking Batman? <laughs> and then in this being like, Jeff John's going, yeah. Yes. It all, yes, yes, yes. Everyone is yes. that Every Batman. appearance of Thomas Wayne is Was the, the same, same Thomas God. Wayne. Yeah. Unless it's Convergence. <laughs> then fuck that. <laughs> so this story opens uh. with, with more Jeff Johns-isms than you can shake a button at, in which real Batman, Bruce Wayne, <laughs> is in essentially a time storage unit. He's in this junky, cobweb-ridden place full of clocks and <laughs> ominous chalkboards that suggest all kinds of fucked up time-related stuff. Maybe some teases of what John's gonna do in the future. In this one, it says 5G slash averted. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Dodge that bullet. You can thank the Time Lords for that one. Does he introduce Time Lords in this? The Time Lords actually already existed. Oh, okay. They they are, like all things Jeff Johns loves, relics from the 60s. Mm, okay. <laughs> With all these clocks, I'm waiting for Captain Hook to show up and just start smashing <laughs> yeah. things. No! The clocks, of course, are important because, like, time and watchmen. Right. So, so clocks. These are clocks. So clocks. These are clocks. watches. Osterman was uh, the son of a clockmaker. Right. Clocks, get it? Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> so Bruce breaks into a safe, and he brings along two characters that he normally wouldn't team up with, but he needs them for this caper, and it's Marionette and Mine. I knew it was going to be them. Right, because Jeff Johns invented them in Doomsday <sighs> Clock, and they are the Punch and Julie Watchman analogs. You have to yeah. understand, they're super important. Yeah, even though literally nobody's used them since I did in Doomsday Clock, but now they're back. It's because they're afraid to touch them, you see, of course, uh, and mess anything up. Well, so they're in it, and basically they are there to help Batman identify a relic that the Time Lords have collected in their hyper-time travels from the recent past. They recognize Jenny Slater's watch and a snow globe that the watch is wrapped around. Now, in Watchmen, there is a snow globe I believe Lori looks into it. Oh. Batman takes the snow globe with him. It'd be funny if he was just like, I know it's a snow globe, but why a city? I'm gonna put snow people in there. I, I, I think it's because this snow globe hasn't come up yet. I think it will in his true sequel to Doomsday Clock, which is coming. Oh. But uh, the watch and the globe are bathed in Dr. Manhattan tachyons. Okay. They, they, are, they are teeming with energy and uh, Marionette and mine recognize it because they're from the Watchmen universe. Not okay. necessarily they can see tachyons, <laughs> but like they it they feels they different sense it. to well, them or something. They were Doctor Manhattan's arch enemies 
back in Watchmen that was retconned by Johns during Doomsday Clock, right. and so they recognize the watch. Okay. Like they know it's Jenny Slater's watch. Remind me again that uh, Mime can create things or just has invisible stuff. In the Watchmen universe, he is just really good at what he does and does mime like guns and weapons, but they don't become real. In the DC universe, they do. Okay. Because we have powers here. I like this right. version better. Yeah, it's I think way it's cooler. All, I think it's super fun. And, and yeah. Gary Frank's art in Doomsday Clock, again, this is like the second episode we have to talk about it, is unparalleled, and his depiction of invisible fucking weapons is dope AF. <laughs> so, obviously, Mary and Emma try to betray Batman. They don't. You know, Batman's like, knock it off. <laughs> They're going to shoot him with an invisible gun. Right. He's like, stop it. So they find the globe and the watch, and he's like, all right, bye. Enjoy your other kid that you're pregnant with. See you later. You're not going to be in the book anymore. If only there was also a Riddler trophy in there. They're like, what is up with this? What, what, what are you going to do? And Bruce looks on the chalkboard, and on the chalkboard says, Thomas Wayne will die. And Batman erases it. Okay. Telegraphing. Gonna save my dad. Yeah, this is what Bruce's whole plan is. He's going to save Thomas Wayne. I lost my dad. When I was an eight-year-old, it made me Batman. Right. I've met my father. I fought my father. Yeah, but he's not your dad. Your dad did die, though. I know. It's so frustrating. This but is like, a random other dad from one of many other no, universes. Well, here's the thing. I, 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 agree. <clears throat> I would normally agree with you, but Barry Allen rewrote this timeline. And in this timeline right. that I live in, that right. was like they like time, hyper time and crisis reanimated Thomas Wayne's corpse. Basically, yeah, and made him that. Right, he's as close to my dad as he's as close I'll to my dad get. than any other version of Thomas Wayne right, throughout like, the multiverse. He could go to like Earth six hundred and five and find a reality in which like no one died and hang out with them. Right, but those aren't nearly as close to my dad as this traumatized psychopath Batman version. <laughs> How about your mom? Maybe you want to see your mom too. Fuck that. Well, also, she wasn't reanimated, so now. <laughs> And also, Thomas wouldn't tell me what her deal was. Oh. <laughs> so Thomas wakes up, and he's in the Flashpoint reality. And he's like, oh, fuck. I gotta do Flashpoint all over again. Because <laughs> that's what it is. He's like, this, this reality's a lie. I've done it before. I can do it again. This, this shouldn't exist. I mean, for you, it's not a lie. No, but it is, well. because I know... It's like... And, they, and they, they use the metaphor of, like, being in the snow globe and knowing what's out there on the other side, right. but not being able to access it. You know, right. like he's, he's... He's bought into the concept that there was a prime correct timeline that yes. somebody fucked with, and that's the only reason he exists. That's right. But he shouldn't because there's some cosmically correct version of history that's right. where he dies. Well, and for him, it also aligns with his core values because he would rather his son be alive than him. So, like... Well, your son is alive. I, Yes, but he doesn't know that. Like, he thinks after having been zapped by Darkseid and being brought back here, that it's been rewritten. Like, he doesn't know about, like, the infinite oh, multiverse. Oh, he thinks if he's back here, that must mean that his son... Is dead again. Is dead again. Yeah, yeah. that, like, Thawne did it again, or Barry did it again, right. or something happened, but, right. like... if I'm alive... That is kind of fair this, to yeah, assume, Yeah, right? right, because, like, how could we both exist at the same time? I only existed because he was dead. Right, except you also existed in the Prime timeline, and you fought your son, and, like, teamed up with Bane and stuff. Right. So, yeah, that's like... bullshit time travel garbage. Right, I yeah, guess... Except he came from another timeline, so why would he assume that if he's back in his original timeline that the other timeline must fail to... Or cease to exist? Right. Because this was supposed to be destroyed. <laughs> yeah, because it was supposed to be unmade, well, and, and he... He also like experienced being unmade by the right. timeline getting replaced. He probably replaced. thought, well, I was the only thing that survived from it. It was wiped out, yes. and I was artificially brought out of it. Exactly. So it, it should be gone. Now it's completely back. Yeah. So that means the other reality is gone. Right. That's that's that's, that's what, what he's assuming. That's what he's assuming. Okay. I mean, that's that's fair. I yeah, guess. Yeah. I I I I buy. I, it. I get it. Yeah. But he's wrong. <laughs> but it's not true. Because the story opens with real Batman stealing snow globes and shit. Right. So. <laughs> We, we there's a little bit of so time. We just want to shout at the page and be like, Tom, no, don't, just stay <laughs> don't there. Don't fuck around. Well, just... like, I don't care about Thomas. I'm just like, fail yeah. or whatever. I don't care about you. Right. Why are we here? What are you doing? I mean, I get his <laughs> Flashpoint beyond. So it's like, we have to go back to Flashpoint. We're doing right. Flashpoint again. It's technically a sequel to Flashpoint. Right. So in the Flashpoint universe, you know, like, just a quick refresher course on this world. Right. Uh, Atlantis and Themyscira are at war, and it's caused a world war, and it's right. like raised across the world because Aquaman and Diana fucked, 
and cheated on Mara, and then Diana killed Mara to like be the prime woman in Aquaman's life, and so he declared war on her, and it's caused a whole ruckus, and it's made everything crazy, and like Grifter is is there and teaming up with Lois Lane and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, that doesn't matter, but I'm just making a joke because like Grifter. I don't know why they keep fucking pushing <laughs> Grifter. Like, whatever. He looks cool. Because he looks so cool. We gotta get him in there. A lot of Wildstorm cool looking characters. <laughs> Superman, of course, like, instead of crashing in Kansas, he right. crashes in the middle of Metropolis and causes, like, citywide destruction. Right. He is then, like, Area 51, and they had to free him to, like, save the world or try to and distract people, and they do, and he right. doesn't, and then he helps right. anyway because he's Superman and he's the best. Did, did we, I'm sure we talked about it, but like, why did he crash in a different place? Because the Flash went back in time and stopped just, his mom from dying? It like, just changed things. The world was a little di different place. And was like, <laughs> he shifted the Earth's orbit yeah. by, like, a, a degree. By a degree, and boom, now he lands in uh, Metropolis instead. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's the same reason why, like, in Red Sun Superman, he crash lands in, like, Russia instead well, of Kansas. except it's, that's Elseworld. That is Elseworld. Well, and this is, is supposed to be the same. Cool. The only thing that should be different yes. is things caused by Barry's decision yeah. to save his mom. Right, and because I guess there's, like, no... There were no crises, and there were no flashes running around. The Earth mm. is moving a little slower, or it's moved a little bit, like, right. to the left. Oh, so you can do anything you want. Yeah. You don't actually have to take that thing you change and extrapolate oh, from it. No. You can just change anything. a lot of work. I don't need to explain that. <laughs> That'd be limiting. Yeah, what am I, Harlan Ellison? I'm fucking writing comic books here. So <laughs> that would be great if he's like, no, because... Think of all the times the Flash... Changed time? Just by running? Oh, just yeah. by going so yeah, fast. I, I counted four times. That changes the Earth axis by like yeah. eight degrees. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, by running fast on the Earth's surface, he pushes the Earth a little sure. bit. Sure. Whatever helps you sleep at night, <laughs> that's what he does. Technically, that is true, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So Thomas Wayne's in the Batcave, and it's empty. He's got his own chalkboard. And on it, it says, everything matters. And he's like, I didn't write that. And I also don't believe it. It doesn't matter. This place is fake. Nothing matters. <laughs> Fuck this place. Everything sucks. That's the truth. Yeah. Fuck you, Bored. No, nothing matters, Bored. Erase. But Who did that? Who but, wrote this? Was but, it Thawne? Did he fuck around? But my matters. Oh. Yeah. But, like, yeah, but he's not here. Yeah, fuck him. No. Yeah. It's every, Nothing matters. Here. Eat it. So he's like, all right, I'll figure it out. So he's like, all right, let's do this. Uh, it's a, it's a detective. Board. You could have just wiped it off. He is not a detective. Broke it. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's not a detective. No, he's a doctor. <laughs> he's wearing the costume of someone who's the one's greatest detective. That's true. He's a different guy. Yeah. Okay. So Thomas Wayne tracks down the Barry Allen of the Flashpoint universe. And the Barry Allen of the Flashpoint universe is a criminal investigator. He's a crime right. scene to cop. Just he's just like, a guy. Yeah. Just like his own counterpart, but he's not a Flash. Right. Just Barry Allen. struck by lightning. And no, he chemicals. didn't get the chemicals of lightning. His mom. Yeah, which he does, and she's alive, because of course it's Flashpoint. So he's investigating another victim of the serial killer known as the Clockwork Killer. Oh, we've got ourselves a ticking clock in this book. The Clockwork Killer is at large. And what does the Clockwork Killer do? They kill very specific characters that Jeff Johns likes and remembers from the Silver Age that also mm. happen to have time-related stuff going on, and uh, their <laughs> organs are removed and clock pieces are replacing them. Ew. Yep. And so Ugh. Thomas is investigating that. Barry's life sucks. He's slow and he's not slow like in the slow? Head, but he's, he's slow to act. He's slow to seal the deal with women and, oh. you know, he's just whatever. So Thomas Wayne ends up in Barry's uh, house. Don't you mean Iris? You no, know, fuck her. She's not even here. Wow. So Thomas is in Barry's apartment. Barry's like, who the fuck are you? Oh, shit. Thomas Wayne, like noted uh, owner of Gotham City casinos and is also like a doctor. Like, what are you doing here? Or he's like, were a doctor. Right. And he's like, well, they didn't, like, remove my license. I just stopped practicing. <laughs> but uh, he's like, look, you're Barry Allen. You're the Flash. Here, I'm Batman, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I don't know any of that. I, also, I, I know I'm who not, Batman is, and you're Batman. That's fucked up. I'm not the Flash. I don't know who the Flash is. No, he's not. But he's there like, look, no you Flash. will, all right? You just, look, you got to come with me. we got to douse you with chemicals. <laughs> and he's like, get the fuck away from me, man. <laughs> so then he injects him with a sedative and then just carries his lifeless body oh my God. to the top of his casino where he straps him to an electric chair. And he's like, what the oh, fuck are you doing? He's like, it's God. okay. I got all the chemicals memorized. You're good to go. I'm going to make you flash, and then you're going to run, and you're going to save your mom to die. So <laughs> You're going to stop yourself from saving your mom. That's right. And right. so uh, get to work. Here we go. And Barry's like, um, if I get struck by lightning, I'm going to fucking die. And he's like, no, it's cool. we got these chemicals here, and they're here, and it's all going to be good. Don't worry it's about it. It's all a thing. Just shut up, okay, Flash? Here we go. And so he Don't is... worry, I tested this on three other people in the electric chair, and they didn't become the Flash because they're not you. That's right. <laughs> so an arrow fires 
breaking the chemicals right before the chair is struck by lightning, turning Barry Allen into the corpse. <laughs> and so Barry Allen is a charred corpse, oh and Batman's like, God. oh, fuck. It turns out it's not an arrow, it's a, uh, it was like a, it was like a, like a harpoon. Oh. Oh, shit. Earlier in the story, uh, Batman Thomas Wayne is roused by the intrusion of Harvey Dent, whose wife Gilda is in Arkham, bereaved from the death of their daughter, whom Batman rescued from the Joker, but then through the trauma still hanged herself. So Harvey and Gilda's daughter hanged herself. It, the, the trauma put Gilda in Arkham and she is raving and demanding to see Thomas Wayne. And Harvey is pissed because his life is falling apart and his kid is dead. They have another one, uh, his son, but uh, his son saw the whole thing and had a miserable time. Uh, so Harvey demands that Thomas go to Arkham to like talk to Gilda. Otherwise, he's going to have him arrested for the murder of Joe Chill because like Harvey knows that Thomas killed Joe Chill at some point. And they didn't care because it was Joe Chill, but I'm hanging it over on you because I want you to literally just go to Arkham and see what Gilda wants. And he's like, fuck you, nothing matters, I'm leaving, I gotta be Batman. And he God goes and it. kidnaps Barry Allen and then turns him into death. So then- <laughs> Does, uh, does <laughs> Harvey Dent know that he's Batman? I don't know, it's kind of nebulous, but like I assume he does. Okay. But so after killing Barry Allen, <laughs> Batman notices that Dent is at the casino ready to arrest him because he didn't literally spend 25 minutes going to Arkham to talk to a woman. So that happens. Uh, lightning strikes are very precise and I cannot miss this. It's true. Uh, so incidentally, the chemicals weren't the only thing that were hit by harpoons that night. Harvey was also hit with a harpoon and killed. Oh. His son is in the car and the car is burning and is gonna explode. Batman swoops into action, rescues Harvey's son. Come here, Robin. <laughs> yeah, you're my new Robin. <laughs> and so he rescues his son. His son identifies that like, there are a bunch of dudes throwing harpoons and they killed his father and broke the chemicals. So Batman springs into action and kicks the shit out of an Atlantean who's like, oh, I did it because uh, Aquaman told me to. And he's like, fuck you, man. <laughs> and the dude proceeds to like, basically bait Batman into freaking out by talking about like how much fun killing is and how much he loves killing and <laughs> watching people kill is great. And, like, yeah, but this Batman kills. Yeah. He uses guns. Yeah, that's right. He's just saying, but I love killing. Like, like I killed uh, the, the, the Dent guy and uh, I helped you kill that guy up there. And have you ever watched a child die? And then Batman just beats his brains in against the wall and then moves on. Yeesh. Yeah, it, it's a dark flashpoint, miserable universe. Yeah. So all of the charges against Wayne are gone because Dent is dead, that's over. Uh, people are still suspicious of him, but it doesn't matter. And also this book is loaded with Easter eggs. I'm not gonna identify all of them, doesn't matter. There's a million names dropped. They're all from the Silver Age. That's all you need to know. The Jeff Johns loved that Silver Age and wants it to come back. Why aren't comics like they were? <laughs> Damn it. Get off my lawn. So. Uh, Child service is gonna take the boy, and Thomas is like, eh, but he suddenly hears someone whisper over here, and it makes him look at the boy again, and it gives him another, like, look, and so he takes the boy, like, and basically watches him. It's the for, predator. Yeah, yeah, over here. Lots of candy. So, yeah, so Thomas takes Dent's son with him to the manor. Why are we doing this? Why is any of this happening? It doesn't matter. Everything, nothing matters. I don't care. But everything matters, and that's the thing. Okay. If nothing matters, why are you saving the boy? Why did Darkseid send him here in the first place? He didn't. Darkseid burned he him. He Omega sanctioned him, and yes. he ends up here? No, he Omega sanctioned him into Ash. He's dead. So this is something else? Something else. Oh, uh, okay. Is the Omega Sanction the one that sends you yes. through time? Yes, but Darkseid can decide what that does. Okay. Yeah, only the one time did it send anyone through time. Da D Thomas Wayne speculates that the Omega Sanction sent him here, but why? Right. But he's wrong. Right. So in Arkham Asylum, Gilda's there, and she just wants to talk to Dr. Wayne. Next door to her cell is a guy named Hayden, which is Psycho Pirate's name. In fact, uh -huh. Psycho Pirate is in the cell next to her. I was just gonna ask if this is gonna be a Psycho Pirate thing where she knows something that she shouldn't know. I mean, that does happen. Right, okay. And Psycho Pirate's in her cell and he's like, this is wrong, everything's wrong, Bruce Wayne's Batman. You're not supposed to be commissioner, Gordon's commissioner. Get out of here, Psycho Pirate, we don't want you here. <laughs> don't worry, he will. So, <laughs> we see in Batman's cave, he has 
Kovacs Journal, the Globe, the Watch, and the letter that Thomas Wayne wrote to Batman that he gave to Barry to send back to him. Right. He, unmade reality. What does it all mean? Yeah, and we've never actually read the letter. Like, we have, like, certain words and a couple of lines, but, like, we've never actually gotten the full letter. We get it at the end of the story. So, oh, thank goodness. Oh, he answers that question. What's in the letter? What's in the letter? Okay. So Batman's talking in the cave next to all of his trinkets uh, to a little boy wearing a coonskin cap named Corky Baxter. And Corky Baxter is a character that, like, nobody should remember, who has no bearing on anything, who was barely relevant when he was created. He's... He's... He from the Silver Age, too? Yes. And he is the brother of another character who's also named Baxter, and she's a Time Lord, and she's friends with Rip Hunter. And uh, so now Corky's back, and he's here, and he's, he's giving Batman a hard time because Batman, of course, broke into the Time Lord's like storage unit and took their shit, and he's like, oh, man, when Rip Hunter shows up, he's going to fucking kick your ass. And Batman's like, I couldn't care less. Fuck you, kid. And so Batman's just doing his thing, tinkering away, making his stuff, while Corky's like, don't do it. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and yell at you. Yep, that's it. I have a slingshot. I'm not gonna use it. Yeah, that's right. So Sweet. Batman's hanging out with this poor kid. And uh, by the way, Batman's uh, Thomas Wayne Batman's Alfred is Oswald Cobblepot. Oh no no! I didn't remember what? that. No. Yeah. So Penguin is his. Yeah, Alfred. everything's topsy turvy. This world's upside down. As Psycho Pirate refers to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so Batman's like, all right, I gotta go. I got shit to do. He, he, he hears about like the Themyscira Atlantean War and how it's raging, it's fucking everything up. And he's like, okay, uh, I've got it. I know Oswald, what I need to do. Make the boy something to eat. Yep. Here's some raw fish. <laughs> he, he's not the penguin. <laughs> he is the penguin, but like he, he never had that experience. So he does out for him to make something to eat and he opens the, the refrigerator. It's full of like capers and olives. Oh. Because that's all the, because yeah. Thomas Wayne doesn't eat, he drinks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Uh, you He's want a martini, kid? You yeah. got orange wedges. Uh. Yeah, exactly. I got some lemon slices. Maybe so, in a maraschino cherry or two. <laughs> yeah, ooh, that'll, that'll, that'll appeal to him. So he's like, look, uh, I kept the kid, because Penguin's like, why? And he's like, because he was a witness. He saw who smashed the chemicals, and I, he might have more information. It, that's what he's telling himself. Right. You know? So he's like, I got to go. Bye. Uh, take care of the kid. And Oswald's like, um, I, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> you know, like, what do I feed it? And he's like, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Uh, so he goes to the clock, which, of course, like Bruce, the clock is the uh, entrance to the, to the cave. Um, but in, I, I don't know if it's actually true. I've just, I remember it always being the case that in the prime continuity, Bruce's clock is broken. And he sets it to the hour that, they, that the Waynes were killed. In this, the clock is not working properly. Mm. Penguin makes a point of saying that it's 11 minutes slow. And so he's like, it's broken. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So he uses it and he answers it. And so then... Uh, you know, these big grandfather clocks are actually quite inaccurate. <laughs> it's true. The humidity so, and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're more for show. <laughs> for status. So Batman goes into the cave and this kid is left with Penguin. And, and, and Penguin's just like, what do you, what do you want to do today? <laughs> and the kid goes, I want to learn how to shoot a gun. And Oswald goes, what kind? <laughs> now you're speaking my language. Okay, oh. I knew there's something I liked about you, kid. Uh, you're a psychopath. Would you, would you like an umbrella gun? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so Batman gets suited up. He gets his signature gun. You know, uh, Aquaman's kind of set up in Parliament in England. Okay. It's just like, all right, this is my base operations for now. As we it's random. As we fuck up, you know, the world. Yeah. It's, they team up with a, a British no. superhero no, he's just, character he's just, or villain. No, he owns seventy percent of the world. world. He's just like, oh, I it's see. an island. I we just wanted to go somewhere yeah. interesting in this book. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We needed him. We needed Batman to go someplace far from Gotham. Right. Okay. So, but also someplace brooding and dark. We can't have him go to Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would that would be weird and, and totally inconsistent. Wonder Woman is tied up and she's defeated by Aquaman. She's a prisoner of war and she's tied up by her own lasso. Mm. It's the only thing that's strong enough to hold her. <laughs> so it's not looking good for Wonder Woman's faction here. No, we get a little Rosencrantz and Guildenstern of the two fucking guards, and they're just like, "Ah, oh, you, you suck, and I want to kill you because you killed my family," and blah blah blah. Uh, they're also like Cthulhu people because they're from the depths of the ocean. Wonder Woman rips one of their tentacles out with her teeth, <laughs> and then Batman emerges from under the water and blows them away with guns, and then talks to Wonder Woman, he's like, Look. And it's fine because, you know, they're squid people. Yeah, fuck them, who cares? Yeah. Also, nothing matters. This universe sucks. Yeah, he's Thomas Wayne, he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit. And he's like, look, I, I, I need your lasso, and I know it's the only thing that's, like, holding you, so I need you to not kill me, but I'm going to take that, and I need to use it, and I'll give it back to you when I'm done. I don't, I don't care. She's like, do you understand? Like, when I get free, I'm going to raise man's world to great. He's like, I don't give a fuck. Whatever, shut up. 
Just will you help me with this <laughs> thing where I need the rope? And she's like, okay. <laughs> he's like, awesome. So then we see that Arthur, Aquaman, he's in his throne, he's hanging out. Clocks, oh. And uh, Batman sneaks up behind him, wraps Aquaman's neck up with the lasso, and proceeds to say, like, why did you send an Atlantean to kill Barry Allen? What do you know about Barry Allen, you piece of shit fish man? <laughs> okay. And, uh, Aquaman, of course, is more strong than him and just throws him across the room with the lasso. And he's like, I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to fuck it. I didn't, I didn't send anybody to kill anybody. I'm going to tear your head off. And that's the truth. <laughs> oh. Because, you know. Lasso. Yeah, he's touching it. Oh, right. <laughs> Oswald calls up Batman on the two-way communicator. He's like, I'm a little busy right now being beaten to death by Aquaman. And he's like, listen, somebody blew up the casino. Oh. Like, all of Wayne Casino is razed to the ground. Your main... And it certainly wasn't the kid that I showed him how to use guns It was not the kid. The kid was with Oswald the whole time. <laughs> but uh, he is like, that's your main income source to be Batman. Oh. So, like, that's over. He's like, who gives a shit? It's all, it doesn't matter. Whatever. I'm right. doing something right now. You're not even supposed to be here. Yeah, all, None of this is real. Right. All yeah. I know is Aquaman didn't hire, or Aquaman did not send. The, the Atlanteans. Yes. The, well, he didn't send the Scavenger. Mm. The Scavenger is, is, is a, uh, a moniker that is used by many ne'er-do-wells in the DC universe. But yeah. So I didn't send the Scavenger. Fuck you. Batman's like, well, that doesn't help me at all. Uh, so he's gonna he's gonna cause a tidal wave that destroys like all of Europe or whatever. All he has to do is touch this trident to this this, this orb. Oh. Using themes and visuals, orbs, globes, clocks. Right. Uh, They're all orb. round. Yeah. It's, it's a very important orb. Yeah. This is the orb of of water or tides or something. Right. So uh, Wonder Woman took the trident and stabbed Aquaman to death. Oh. Uh, yep. She's yep. So he's dead, and she's like, okay. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get my sisters, and I'm gonna fucking kill everybody. And Batman's like, okie dokie, bye. Don't <laughs> care. I don't know if you noticed. I am the Batman who doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you knew. None of this is real yeah. anyway. Okay, Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> so he leaves, and he ends up back at Gotham. He's back at the manor. You know, the kid's shooting up the whole place. He's just shooting, like, you know, busts and priceless artifacts and we stuff. We don't have a, a, a shooting gallery here. No. So, like, yeah, just knock yourself out. Shoot the West Wing. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> and he's like, I, you said to do whatever he wanted, so he wants to shoot things. And so... Okay. Uh, he's just like, okay, well, uh, the casino's gone. Uh, I guess we should find out who did it, because, like, that seems to be connected. I mean, he, whoever sent me on the goose chase to go to get the information from Aquaman wanted me to be away from the right. casino and let that happen so it's a message to me so thomas wayne has put together like a whole menagerie of like what's going on there are a bunch of different people who have been killed by this clockwork killer these are people who could unmake the flashpoint okay so somebody's bumping off time travelers intentionally yes is it the joker is it the joker <laughs> Good question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Thomas Wayne goes to the wreckage of the casino. Uh, he's met by the police. The police are just like, Jesus, like this, I'm sorry. And he's like, it doesn't matter. She's like, which part doesn't matter? All of your employees who are dead or the loss of your entire like empire? That and was the, insured. And the innocent patrons who were inside. Yeah, he's like, take your pick. Yeah, and he, all of them. But he, None he, of them. Clearly he's like sentimental because like, he reaches down, he picks up like a chip. Mm. Uh, so he takes it with him. So the commissioner mentions to Thomas that one of the inmates keeps talking about the Waynes and they're asking about you. And they keep mentioning things like hyper time and said that you would know something about that. Okay. So he's like, oh shit. So he goes- Oh, I should have gone. Yeah, they, the guy's calling himself psycho pirate, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> and he's like, oh shit. Okay, so he Batman's up, he goes to Arkham, he sneaks in, and he finds that the psycho pirate has been hanged in his cell. Psycho pirate didn't hang himself. <laughs> Clearly he was murdered and then made to look like a suicide, so the people at Arkham will be like, yeah, he killed himself, but I will know right. that he isn't. So he's Because like, I'm the world's greatest surgeon. That's right. So he looks on the wall <laughs> and he sees, he sees like multiverses scrawled on the wall, Bruce Wayne is Batman, all that stuff. He's like, okay, he... He knew too much. Yeah. Someone else must have known what he's been saying. Uh, so as he's walking through the corridor, he bumps into Gilda. She asks to see the thing in his hand. It's the casino chip. And he passes it through the slot. She takes it and she looks on the other side. And from the explosion, the other side of the casino chip is scarred. 
So she proceeds to bait him. Like she's talking to him through the glass and she's talking about like what an asshole he is and what he did to his wife and how she went insane and how she's dead and all that stuff. You know, that old chestnut. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, she, she tells him that he was a bad father. And that caused him to punch the glass and break a small hole in it. And she's like, ha, I could do better than that and proceeds to bash half of her face into her side God of the glass. damn it. Tearing it open. And he says, it doesn't matter. And she goes, it matters to me. And, uh, oh, that was messed up. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> so he leaves and he's just, he's <sighs> seething and he's angry and he sees a mugging committed by fucking Captain Boomerang of this universe. Oh, God. And he just goes in and he's like, okay. He's just breaking bones and kicking the shit out of people and just being like, this feels good. I, I really like hurting people. Uh, and he's good. Maybe he, I'm oh, a bad bad I'm man. Not I'm, okay. I am the worst. <laughs> so he uh, he steals uh, Captain Boomerang's gun and he's gonna shoot Captain Boomerang and he is knocked with full force into the opposing wall by Superman. Oh. Superman says, "I heard you and you're wrong. Everything matters." Sorry, it took me a long time to get here. <laughs> well, I'm doing shit. I took the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Superman is. He's busy. Corky explains in the, no, in the snow globe, like, oh, you know, in the, there's always a storm raging in the snow globe, you know? Like, it's never, it's never, it's never still. Corky, it's, leave it alone for five minutes, it'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those flakes will settle right down. Yeah. You gotta stop shaking it, though. Right, but Batman's like, yeah, but regardless of what goes on in it, everything in it is preserved and safe. And Corky's like, sure. and listen, like, the Time Master aren't the one you should be afraid of. It's the guy who owns the watch you took. If the owner of the watch doesn't appear in the book, then the, what is the purpose of the warning? Right. Well, to set up, set up more. another book. More okay. setup. Yeah. All right. That's the that's the point. Jeff of the Johns got to book. get paid. That's right. You want you want a follow up again? Look, you fuckers didn't like Three Jokers, okay? I gotta do something else. <sighs> okay. We get a flashback in the Flashpoint universe to the destruction of Krypton. Uh, we see that you know Jor El has given the message to Clark as he or Kal El as he's being fired. You know, like you're you're. You're special, you're the savior, our, our planet's dying. But we see that Cal's isn't the only rocket that's leaving Krypton. There's like oh, there's dozens a lot. of them. Yeah. It's just, this is the only one that comes to Earth? Yes. Geopolitical maneuvers are being made by the Themyscarians and all of Earth in this like World War Three. Uh, which, who gives a fuck? Apparently it doesn't matter. What? The the giant epic war raging across Earth is, is relegated a, to TV, like background note. noise. Yeah, it's background noise to Cobblepot teaching <laughs> Dexter how to pick locks. Yeah, well, that's really hard to draw all that. Oh, yeah. You know, and it, <laughs> well, those and fight it, scenes. Well, it's not like, really what's important, you right. know? What, what matters is this boy. <laughs> yeah, this boy Dexter and him learning that he can, like, pick locks. Because so, maybe if you're alive... Mm -hmm. Thomas Wayne won't try and destroy this universe. Yeah, just because of Dexter Dent. <laughs> uh, so while Penguin is helping Dexter like pick locks, uh, Eobard Thawne, the reverse Flash, shows music. Duh, I need Thomas Wayne. He's oh. coming for me. He's coming to get me again. After. And Dexter's like, what, what was the that? What was that? I don't know. It's this weird ghost that keeps showing up. Kyle <laughs> just goes, I have no idea, kid, but I do need a drink. You want one? <laughs> so. Yeah, give me three fingers of milk. Yeah, so Superman faces Batman. Batman's like, fuck off. He tries to punch him. He breaks his hand. And then uh, ultimately Superman like backhands Batman, knocks him unconscious, and brings him with him. Uh, Dent, uh, Gilda Dent, is being carted away, strapped down, uh, bandages on her face. And they're like, Batman must have done this to her. And they're like, all the damage is on the other side of the glass. She did it to herself. That's why she's restrained. <laughs> And all she wants is her son. She wants to see Dexter. And there's a voice that's like emanating from somewhere that's like, you will see your son. You'll get him. Okay. So Superman teamed up with Poison Ivy after Thomas Wayne murdered her in a story that didn't happen, uh, where she she died, but then she was resurrected by the Parliament of Trees. Oh, yeah. uh, thanks to Jason Woodrow, who is the Swamp Thing of this universe. Uh, he was the Floronic Man, but now he's Swamp Thing. The Floronic Man? Yeah, he's the, well, you know, everybody's like got to have Like and Flora? Yeah, the Floronic uh. Man is uh, basically evil Swamp Thing. Uh. Uh, so, uh, it, it, but in this reality, the Floronic Man is Swamp Thing, and it's a topsy-turvy world. Right. Uh, but, right. Uh, but Poison Ivy is still definitely Poison Ivy. And uh, so they have, so in conjunction with Super Superman recovers some of the crystals that were lost in the uh, devastation of Metropolis. Oh, and his crystals. That's right, his crystals. Oh, okay. And so he uses them in conjunction with the Parliament of Trees and makes like a sanctuary made of crystalline plants. Plants? 
Yeah, well, because if you throw the crystals in the Arctic and it makes like ice. I thought it just made crystals. No. no it just makes whatever. It makes whatever the material is yeah. around. Oh. Yeah, it's yeah, ice. I, I literally thought. Yeah, you know, I know. It's ice and. Well, it's ice and crystals, but like it's crystalline. That's in, what they in did in Superman Returns. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he made the fucking planet. Yeah. That was a country. Yeah. That well, became yeah. a planet. The big island out of kryptonite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, out of crystals. Well, crystals. That oh, had yes, a with kryptonite, kryptonite core, That's so we made a whole bunch more kryptonite. Oh so we had a whole thing made of kryptonite, so Superman couldn't go there. That's so right. He did and and lifted it and, and lifted then. it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, they're they're creating this sanctuary for people to save them from the war. You know, the world war that's going oh, right, on. Right, the war. Yes. Right, yes. And Superman proceeds to take one of the crystals and insert it into like some plants. You know, because like it's all it's all plant. Yeah, I just shove yeah. crystals into the plants. Well, and like then... vines take the crystal and like incorporate it into their system. How do they know what they're supposed to do with it? Because it's crystals. <laughs> right. How, they don't have like numbers on them or anything. I don't know what they're <laughs> supposed to know. But it engineers a holographic projection of the message from Jor-El. Uh, it's not holographic, it's made of vines. Well, yeah. like, it would be holographic if it were using, you know, but it's, it's, it's plants. And Jor-El's like, if you are receiving this message, it means we su you survived, which means we can survive. You're there to prepare the planet for our arrival and inevitable conquest. What? That's right. Why is this different? <laughs> this was on another planet. Because. Jor-El was not like that. <laughs> now, in this reality, Jor-El and the Kryptonians are warmongers who, they, look, Krypton was going to be destroyed. Right. And but somehow Flash going back in time to save his mom from dying caused Krypton to. To be also a bunch of assholes. And uh, right. so they yeah. sent and, Superman and more as like a. more of them like survived a, than otherwise. Or, or it wasn't destroyed at all? No, it was. Oh, okay. There, was, there, were, there were rumors actually after Superman's arrival and, you know, his display of power that they're like, when they found out about like the redacted, the unredacted documents that pertained to Superman's conquest and control, uh, they found out about Krypton and everything and they, they're like, we don't, there were a lot of theorists that were like, Krypton isn't destroyed, they're coming here. He's just a, you know, he's just, a, he's just a scout. And uh, then it turns out, yeah, no, that's true. There's no way to communicate with the army that's coming. Uh, yeah, well, because he was separated, because. <laughs> oh, he was supposed to with the crystal thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's an invader. Yes. Like right. the Urkins. Right. <sighs> I come here, I prepare the planet yes, for what we're taking. Yes, exactly. And so, uh, they're coming, and they're gonna take it. And with Earth's Yellow Sun, they're gonna be Superman. And we've gone rather far afield from the concept of what if Barry Allen went back <laughs> and stopped his mom from dying. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, like, you know, Thomas Wayne, how, how would Mar like Barry's mother being alive make Joe Chill shoot one person instead of two people. Right. You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> this book is like, what, what would happen? What if worst things happen? <laughs> what would happen if uh, Barry Allen stopped his mom from dying and why would it change everything? Yeah. It's the butterfly <laughs> like, effect wait, what? of books. Yeah, in the yeah. movie, you mean. Yes. Yeah. Now, here's the thing that I like to think. This is my theory. It has nothing to do with Barry's mother. Right. That, like, Barry's mother was the thing we could identify that is different but actually, Flash did something else. Yeah, something much more drastic. Yes. That he's not even aware Remotely of. Remotely aware of. It was like a like, side no, effect of how he went back You could have always saved your mother. Right. It's because. Yeah, this is a, a different thing you, you did. fucked something up. But he goes back in time like all the time. How come this time it changes everything well, in the galaxy? Uh, he stepped on an ant. Because it's cooler. He left a candy wrapper so, in prehistoric times. There we go. Hopefully this is not a spoiler. Yeah. But is it that like, no, this isn't that at all. Right. He accidentally fell into a different universe and that's all it is. It, he, he didn't it is do not, anything. He didn't cause it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Barry didn't do this. <laughs> but of course he didn't do this. We know this because we right. see Batman. Right. Like, we know it's not time travel anymore. Right, we're, we're way we're far. We're way past uh, time yeah. travel. Although, Johns wants you to think hyper time, because hyper time right. is many things. Right. So, you know, okay. uh, uh, th this, this confederacy of dunces is like, hey, uh, Batman, we need you for some fucking reason, <laughs> and you should help us out, because, like, the Kryptonians are coming, you're a smart guy, and, like, you know, and, and Superman is on our side. He's like, no, there's good people here. We, we right. need your money and resources. You saw that casino, right? <laughs> right. No. Uh, no. Oh, well then get the fuck out of here. You're old and useless. You don't even have Good. powers. I don't want to be here. Right. Nothing matters. No, this, this isn't supposed to be here. Yeah. How is this supposed to happen? Well, and like Superman tries to appeal to Batman by being like, listen, like, they're good people here. And he's like, who cares? Why are you defending these people? Let it die. Let it die. 
This world sucks. Yeah. This is Fuck a constant this war yeah. covering the whole planet. I was, I was at a way better world. I've seen yeah. it better. Trust I saw me. Metropolis yeah. whole. Yeah, I see yeah. you bigger. Yeah, you're better off dead. Right. <laughs> Poison Ivy, you're still pretty much the same, I guess. Right. The only thing they do know is that it's like they have a timetable. That mm. like according to the chronometers, five days is before the Kryptonians oh. arrive. Oh. So Batman's like, okay, I have five days to end the world. By the commissioner of Gotham is at Iris West's house, uh, in which there is another body. You're like, oh, okay, Wally. Uh, no, it's Thawne. What? Oh. Thawne was slaughtered and his yep. organs replaced with, 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 with clock, clock parts. Clock pieces. Well, that Didn't makes sense. That change time and it's not and Wally wearing a Thawne costume or anything. Right. It's uh, just him. Who, yeah. who could have killed him? Right. Who could have killed Thawne indeed? Uh, and this is not Dr. Dr. Manhattan replacing people with watch pieces? No, Dr. Manhattan's not like, <laughs> This is like uh, a twisted Dr. Manhattan. We're gonna make everyone a claw. Oh, you, oh Scott, you like that Antichrist? Well, here's Dr. Anti Manhattan. And he, he's red. And <laughs> Dr. Ant Hatton? Oh my God, no, it's, it's Manhattan red and Manhattan blue. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh no. <laughs> that is not what happens. Right. And I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're watching. Don't do it. Yeah. I broke the seal. I can do whatever I want now. Yeah. So Corky's sister and her friend are in like a time sphere, just hype, just fucking around through hyper time, and they're oh. like, "Uh oh, things are getting crabbed." And they see that like <laughs> Thomas Wayne shouldn't be alive, and that's fucking oh. up hyper time. Oh, oh, now we're getting. Yeah. Now, so these are the characters with the bubble from the room that Batman was in at the beginning. Yeah, that's right. Okay. The, the, How many fucking issues in are we before we start to see like the larger picture? Four. Four. Okay. Halfway. Yes. <laughs> so he's collected these pieces, and you can see like he's got like all these clock pieces. Like he's right. got enough to like make oh from a, other people. A clock. Yeah. Oh. He's, well, he's collected all the pieces. Right. If you take all the pieces from all the different bodies, you can make one clock. Yes. Get fucked. <laughs> Dexter goes down to the cave, steals a few items that he needs from Batman's arsenal, including like, like a like a utility belt and a bunch of other things. And he's like, "Okay, let's go." And so he is going to spring into action and do his own thing. He learned all those skills that he needed to right. execute his now plan. I'm Robin. He's going to it, you, leave. It's been three days, boys. <laughs> yeah, he's going to leave. He's going to go to Arkham. He's going to see his mom. That's the plan. Okay. So. Thomas Wayne shows back up with all the pieces, all the clock pieces he's collected from all the different bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, he meets up with Oswald. Who's like, oh, the boy ran away. And he's like, mm, it doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter because nothing matters. Well, because he's like, well, didn't, why did you take the boy in the first place? Like, oh, he was like a witness, but it doesn't matter anymore. I got the pieces. Now I got to put together this clock. And hey, remember that thing I thought <laughs> mattered? It doesn't. Yeah, like literally, like Oswald Cobblepot is like, you got to do something. This poor kid, because he spent like three days with him. Like he's, he's yeah. through three sizes that day. <laughs> and he's like, you're you know, a miserable bastard. This is the first joy that I've had in this house. Exactly. And he's like, no, I can't. I can't go save him right now. He's like, you're Batman. I would go, but I'm fat and old and I can't do it. Plus he, this boy's cool. He shoots guns. He picks locks. Yeah. He rules. Yeah, exactly. But he's like, I can't go. And he's like, why? He's like, I have to build this clock. <laughs> Uh, and Oswald Cobble was like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? With you? What Just happened to you? Him. Yeah. Listen to yourself. <laughs> so he proceeds to help Thomas build the clock. Oh. It's like, oh, actually, now you mentioned this clock thing. Yeah. Well, like. Yeah, fuck that kid. Yeah. Clearly there is something I love a bigger, good puzzle. There's something bigger going on here. Yeah, it'd be neat if like, Nygma was the oh. butler. Oh. 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 But it's no, funny. No, but I already just, said it was Penguin. Yeah, we already set that up. <laughs> so Dexter breaks into Arkham and he tries to save his mom or access her. Right. And, uh. While that's happening, uh, he know. learns acrobats. Yeah, he's 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 a badass. But she made herself Two Face. Yeah. Why does she know who Two Face is? No. Well, maybe because because Two Face doesn't fucking exist. Well, remember, in her world. there's this voice that's been like talking to her the whole time. It's been like feeding her information. How how does she know so much about Thomas Wayne? How does she know so much about the other timeline about being a bad father? Like, is it Psycho Pirate? It is not Psycho Pirate. Someone murdered Psycho Pirate after they tortured him for information and gave them right. the information. I assume right. Psycho Pirate like somehow like infected well, her. And here's the problem is that like um, Psycho Pirate <laughs> was like an integral part of Infinite Frontier slash Justice League Incarnate and actually got like special powers and became like another version of Psycho Pirate. And so like, why is he here? And in fact, in the book they say that like 
before he died, he admitted that he came to this pocket reality to hide from the dark crisis. And I'm like, oh, okay, you say that it matters. That's nice. But also, fuck you, because he wouldn't do that because he was important and he was doing something leading up to Dark Crisis. Right. Also, he even says, before he dies, I don't even know if I'm the real Psycho Pirate. And I'm like, eat me. No, you want it to be Psycho Pirate and you're doing that because we don't want to kill Psycho Pirate in right. this fucking pocket universe. Right, you want to kill Psycho Pirate, but they won't let you kill the real Psycho Pirate, so yeah. I don't even know if I'm the real Psycho right. Pirate. It's Never almost go. like someone else wrote that and yep. Johns didn't read the book because, well, I wrote it, I know what happens in it. <laughs> Except yeah, that can't be line. because there's no editor, so who would do that? Exactly. So the voice is talking to uh, Gilda, and Dexter goes, who is that? Dexter like, can hear it? Dexter can hear it. Oh. It means the voice is real, and it belongs to someone physically in the room. I'm, I'm just next to you. <laughs> I'm in the next cell. Yes. Are you an oh. idiot? <laughs> That's right. Well, you was like, <laughs> wait. You mean I'm not crazy? <laughs> oh, I mean you are. I mean, yes, you look but at that. But like, also not because you're hearing voices. Right. That's real. No, the voices thing. That's that's me. So they build the clock, and it's all set. Okay, that is a big clock. A lot of pieces. There are a lot of bodies. He's a it serial was killer. Multiple bodies. Yeah. yeah. So he built the clock, and it's done. And Thomas looks at the piece in his hand, and he's like, "Oh fuck, this piece mm -hmm. doesn't go to this clock." Ah, uh, he has an extra piece. He has an, well, he has a piece that is missing That's from that clock. Oh, it's missing from that clock, but this is not the piece. This yes. goes somewhere else. It goes somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, or you don't know how to build a fucking clock. No, I'm no, Batman! I'm a surgeon! I'm the world's greatest surgeon! And what is a clock if not just a, a mechanical person? Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> while Thomas is obsessing over the piece, Cobblepot's reading Gilda's file that they took, and he's like, oh, shit. You need to read this, like, right now. And... While Penguin's uh, reading I'm the- I'm Thomas Wayne. I don't do what people tell me to do. Like, excuse me. So he runs upstairs- Why don't you give me the gist of it? He runs upstairs. He goes to the clock entrance to the cave. Mm -hmm. And he takes the piece that he has. Oh, it goes to his it clock. It goes to his clock. Dum, dum, dum. This clock hasn't worked for a while because of this missing piece. Cobblepot reveals that in the file, it determined that uh, Gilda Dent- killed her daughter. That it, they made it look like a suicide. Oh. Gilda Dent's a psychopath who murdered her daughter. Did she do the same thing Ooh. to Psycho Pirate? No. Because Gilda that's, did not kill Psycho Pirate. Okay. That's very coincidental that they were both hung. Yeah. Mm. Not by their own means. No, that's true. That that's is true. true. Yeah. So Tom is like, holy shit, I know who the killer is. Based on this clock thing? Based on the clock thing, yeah. Who had access to the clock? Meanwhile, a Cobble secret- a se No! Dexter? No, what? So, a secret <laughs> compartment opens next to Gilda's room and reveals Martha Wayne the Joker. Oh, right. What? She didn't die. She, uh, she fell down a hole. She fell down a hole and you just assumed she died. Oh. People fall down holes all Bruce fell down a hole, he found bats. That's right, he became Batman. <laughs> Never <have> limp. <laughs> She's the voice. Oh, I see. So She's the clock killer. So she... No, she's the Joker. And the And that killer. also. <laughs> so she's trying to prevent her reality from being unmade, even yes. though she was completely on board with Thomas Wayne. Well, here's the She was the thing. on board until you... she found out that Bruce was still going to become Batman. Right. Oh, that's right. But that's not her motivation. Her oh. motivation is not to preserve this timeline. Oh, life. okay. But she did want to kill all the time travelers. Okay. Uh, for and, what reason, then? Well, for one thing, she needed to get all the information she needed. So Martha Wayne didn't die, and instead she, like, killed Psycho Pirate and tortured him for information. She killed uh, Thawne, the Reverse Flash. Right. The Somehow. greatest villain the Barry Allen's ever faced. <laughs> Fuck if I know. She, she snuck up on him. Who cares? The point is, he's she dead. cold cocked and, him. Yeah, and she shoved all their bodies with, with, with pieces of a clock. Wait that, a minute. Didn't he say that he's coming after me? Yeah, no. Thawne is afraid of being caught by someone else. Uh, but also, uh, but it wasn't. But that's not who killed. But him. Yeah, or but maybe he all was, of him saying that is a red herring. Yeah, or maybe he was being chased by Manhattan or a Manhattan esque mm. entity, and Martha sees the crime of opportunity. Okay. Uh, but in any case, uh, while that's happening, the snow globe in Bruce Wayne's cave is shattering or cracking. No. No globe is supposed to stay intact. I know. It's safe. I bet Corky loves this shit. Corky does. He's Well, he hates it because it means that it's going to unmake everything. He's explaining how, like, what's happening is hypertime is facing the omniverse because 
Johns introduced the metaverse in Doomsday Clock, and then Snyder introduced the Omniverse at the end of Death Metal, and so Johns is like, fuck you. I already introduced the metaverse, and then you say there's an Omniverse? That's bullshit. No, Omniverse is hitting hyper time, which is really dumb, and it's breaking everything, because Omniverses are stupid. It doesn't make any sense. So hyper time. Uh, you don't want to use my fucking metaverse? Fine. We'll use the one that everybody knows, which is hyper time. And what is hyper time? An excuse to explain sliding time scales and alternate timelines. Okay. To be able to say, like, you can go back in time and make an alternate timeline, but it doesn't affect the main timeline. Okay. It's essentially just a storytelling device that doesn't allow you to use the multiverse because post-crisis there was no multiverse. Right. They were literally just like, you can't use the multiverse, but you can call them timelines. I see. They're not separate universes. They're, They're timelines. Alternate timeline versions of this universe. And That's skew. And it's all this universe. It's totally different. Yep. It's a totally, totally different, different concept. From a even though we're gonna make it, we're gonna use it to yep. do whatever we want mm -hmm. and tell the same stories we would have told yes. with no explanation as to how time travel caused those changes. Okay, so hyper time is the multiverse, but using timelines instead. Right. And, and in this it, book, it justifies the flashpoint beyond use because Flashpoint technically isn't another Earth, right. it's an alternate timeline, even though right. it definitely is also an alternate Earth. But it was also destroyed. Well, it was unmade, but maybe not. So the globe is what? The snow globe? Yeah. It's is a it pocket the, dimension. Is it the okay. what? It's pocket reality. Created by what? Batman. Oh. Only when he has access to Dr. Manhattan-esque tachyon particles from the Jenny Slater watch, Oh. And that snow globe that he took from those Time Lords. I see. So there was a snow globe. He turned it into a pocket universe. Yes. Okay. So. And that's where we are? We're in the snow globe? That's where the Flashpoint reality is, yes. Yes, okay. Because okay. Batman could not abide Thomas Wayne, his father, being dead. So he so built a place for him to go. Yes. Rachel when Darkseid Omega sanctioned him. He was reduced to ashes. And then Ra's al Ghul recovered the ashes no. of Thomas Wayne and then no. gave the ashes to Batman along with a number of other uh, accoutrements that he needed in order to facilitate uh. the construction of another universe because Ra's al Ghul also read Kovac's journal and told Batman about it and was like, go do this and you'll be able to preserve your father. Okay. Why are you helping him, Ra's? Why is it Ra's al Ghul? I right. thought you were gonna say he took the ashes and he put him in a friggin' pit, a fucking uh, a Lazarus pit. A Lazarus pit. Yeah. And they come out a guy. Right. Thank no. God it wasn't that. But then why did it have to be? But it still was. Well, because Ra's al Ghul is like the master of resurrection. Yeah, but these are ashes. Right. You don't resurrect ashes. You you, no, you resurrect dead people. Body. Well, but if I put ashes into like a time snow globe, what does that have will... to do with what you know? That's completely different it's than just, a Lazarus no, because, pit. Because thematically relevant, Rachel Gould's about resurrection. He harbinges the resurrection of Thomas Wayne. I see. And he has a he has a familial reason to do it because Damien is his grandson. So what does that have to does do with fucking Thomas I'm helping, Wayne? I'm helping out. I'm helping out Bruce. I'm does giving he him want a, a fellow grandfather to hang out with. Be no. like, hey, we're both grandparents <laughs> of Damien Wayne. Yeah, he knows he can't hang out with him because he knows that he's got to create a pocket dimension right, to do he it. He can't go there. He's just facilitating the resurrection, Thomas, and giving him something for his troubles. Now right. I'm the best grandpa. <laughs> right, because I'm here. Okay. Before it was by default because I was the only <laughs> right. one. Yeah, but now there has to be another one, or had been one. I'm gonna resurrect him. So then, like the, this, this kind of like this. The, the next chapter opens with two days after the Dark Crisis. And they're like, well, anyway, everybody made it. It's all do it's all fine. So we find out about the ending to Dark Crisis on like the equivalent of a talk show, which also features Bonnie Baxter on as a, like a panelist who is a self-anointed like I am a Lord of Time. I'm from the Time Masters. I hang out here, and I'm gonna explain to you about hyper time, like, because Mr. Terrific is also there. And he's like, hi, I'm Mr. Terrific. And I know about Omniverses because like, that's the new thing. And we're good. And we got like this, uh, we got er multiple Earths and stuff. I'm, I'm super smart, but uh, I don't know that much about hyper time. Right, well he, yes. Well, yeah. He's the third smartest man in the universe, but Bonnie's the, the smartest woman in the universe. Right. Why is that a distinction? She makes it a distinction because she's like, fuck you. So he's <laughs> explaining like, no, so here's the thing, uh, panelists and, 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 and folks at home. Uh, we live in an omniverse and everything matters. 
because Scott Snyder said so. And Bonnie's like, um, actually, oh that's stupid. And <laughs> everything doesn't matter, actually. Actually, it doesn't. And you know why it doesn't matter? Because because I'm Jeff Johns. <laughs> yes, because I'm Jeff Johns and I get to pick what matters because it matters to me. And hypertime is a reflection of the universe deciding what does matter. And it's a metatextual way of saying like, you don't get to editorially mandate what matters. You don't get to say what happened and what matters because the reader decides what matters. And I'm Jeff Johns and I was a reader in the 60s. And so I say that that matters. But I, people in the 90s say that like bloodlines matters. <laughs> and so if enough people like bloodlines, then bloodlines matters more than what I like. And so you it's can't democratic. say- democratic. Yeah, yeah. And hypertime is democratic. Yeah, and, and it, that's better and than- Than the omniverse. Than everything Than matters. just saying that everything matters and everything happened. I can't believe he also doesn't Jesus. bring back uh, Hal Jordan somehow. Well, Hal Jordan's already back. Yeah, he's already back. You don't have to worry about bringing back. Yeah, Hal but he's Jordan. not in this story. That's like, true. He's not a in the story. Right. Hal Jordan, no. Barry Allen, and already did that. Superman are like, we matter. Fuck you. Yeah. Jack well, I already Trump proved Trump. that. I don't need to again. Right. Now I got to deal with this fucking omniverse thing. So yes. Fucking Thomas Wayne and uh, Bonnie Baxter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah, because she says, with all due respect, the yeah. omniverse is hardly everything. Because, I mean, it's been the center of exhaustive crises, like Final Crisis and Infinite Earths and, and Infinite Crisis. nobody cares. Like, and, and it's been like manipulated by characters like Superboy Prime and some, some sort of Batman who laughs or something. It's the only one she actually makes fun of. She goes, Even the evils of the Anti-Monitor, Alexander Luthor and Superboy Prime, Darkseid and the so-called Batman <laughs> who laughs. And that's when you know, he's like, no. Death metal's dumb. But it right. doesn't matter because- Unless you decide that it's great and then it matters. Oh, and then I guess that's fine. Yeah, but you won't because it's stupid. Yes. Even though it's sold really well. Really well. Better than Flash from <laughs> Beyond. <laughs> oh, yeah, by your own criteria, yeah. Jeff, mm -hmm. actually- Actually. Actu actually, the Omniverse has to matter. Yeah, and, and matters be, more than hyper yeah. time. Uh, or, or are we taking sales into this? Or is well, that what this is? You always do. Okay, so, uh, uh, okay. Oh, so anyway, Bart and Bonnie gets called in. They're like, oh shit, everything's falling apart. We gotta go. And so she's like, okay, bye. Oh, the Time Lord's called yeah. her, yeah. So that was a little aside. Yes, a little like a little, interlude, if you yeah. will. Yeah. So Thomas Wayne tears ass over to Arkham because he's like, I've got to stop Martha Wayne, AKA the Joker from- AKA. The Clockwork clock killer. killer from doing her nefarious deeds, and I guess also you know Dexter's there, or his his mom's a murderer, and so you know like yeah, maybe I'll save I, him. Maybe I'll save him if, if she but, was gonna kill him. I don't know if she was. I or mean, not. but nothing matters, so who cares? <laughs> and no, I, I certainly don't care. <laughs> yeah, wait, what happened to uh, trying to unmake this reality? Right, are you still doing well, that? And, and Oswald is like, hey man, um, like you need to <laughs> save Dexter because like his mother's gonna kill him because his mother is a child murderer, and he's like, it it, it doesn't matter, and he's like. <gasps> How dare you? Like, how can you say that? Uh, I said nothing matters at the beginning of all this, Oswald. Yeah, but then we get this, like, link, and this is because Wayne's are nothing if not emotional. <laughs> he says he's just an innocent kid, and it takes Thomas back to the death of Bruce. Mm. And it's Martha saying he's just a child, and Joe Chill says it doesn't matter. Oh. Thomas, like, realizes, oh my god, I've been chanting, echoing right. the belief system of the man who murdered my son and is the impetus behind my whole philosophy of this felonious reality. Right. Oof. Well, I'm gonna make it reality. I'm sorry, I gotta go. That's when it turns out that like Oswald wrote Everything Matters. Yeah, <laughs> right, it was Oswald. No, uh, I guess it was Martha. I guess. Or. Yeah, because she had access to the Batcave. She had access cave. to the Batcave. She yeah. was, and she was bebop and scatting all over this world. Yeah. Because uh, she reveals some heavy shit that Jeff Johns has no business revealing. <laughs> Uh-oh. Which we haven't even gotten into yet, and I'm so excited to drop this fucking bomb on you guys. <laughs> Gilda now has Dexter, and she's like threatening to kill him. Mm. Uh, if why Martha- does, Why does Martha care? Eh, because like, you know, she's her, her, her mother, her, her son was killed in front of her, and she's like, you know, still pretty sensitive about it. Uh, but <laughs> she explains like how, like why would the Joker be the clockwork killer? Well, that's what jokes are. Set up, punchline, tick tock, tick tock. 
And, and jokes what? are all about timing. Yeah, but you could have like second hands. You you could have said that at any point. Oh, but this yeah. is the first time in your whole history of being the Joker that you did this clock thing, though, right? Oh, absolutely. So what made you well, decide just I'm, now to do this? Well, because I'm going to go back in time. Oh, okay. That's my whole plan. We'll, we'll get to there. But uh, uh, so she's so Gilda's got. Dexter with a knife and Martha Joker is just explaining, she's monologuing, and right. then she's like, oh, hang on a second, because uh, my husband's back. And Batman smashes through the like a adjoining window mm. and all the shards are like classic Batman and Robin stories throughout DC's history. Hmm. Batman Which this and Robin. Batman never got to have. He's about to. I mean, we have been setting up Dexter being Robin the whole fucking time. Right. So. Batman rushes in and uh, he faces Martha. Dexter is taken by Gilda away uh, and uh, she's just holding him. She's like, we're going to be together forever. It's going to be uh -oh. okay. And he's like, mom, you're hurting me. Uh. Like, oh no. So Gilda takes Dexter away. They go into an elevator and Batman throws Martha into a cell as the orderlies burst in and seals them in. It's her or Gilda's cell. So it has the, you know, access tunnel that they need. Uh. And uh, so... Martha explains that she survived the fall and then like followed a stream through the caves and made her way out. Okay. Um, I would like to retcon something using my hyper time that might make this deliciously ironic because Martha fucking died. Mm. But we know that in the prime universe, <sighs> yep. there's yeah. a Dionysium well in the cave. Yeah. And let's say that some part of it imprinted onto Martha <laughs> and seeped into her cracked skull. Yeah. Reanimated her. Reanimating her and then following her way into the cave. So let's say that a Scott Snyder invention is the reason why Martha oh. made it in the cave. Yeah. That'll sure. piss Jeff off. That's right. <laughs> she was here in Arkham and she's listening in on conversations and she met up with Psycho Pirate and listened to all of his ramblings and learned about the other Earth and mm. the other timeline and about Bruce and about what happened. And about and, and then proceeded to torture, interrogate, and murder Psycho Pirate. Made it look like a suicide, right. and uh, found out about the Joker, the real Joker. Does mm. does Psycho Pirate at any point be like, the Joker is here with me and trying to kill me? No. Well, they didn't hear anything. Yeah, he says crazy shit all the time. Exactly. He's a crazy person. Yeah. He says he's from another out. reality. Yeah. He says he's hiding from a dark crisis. What the fuck's that supposed to mean? <laughs> you know, she learned that Bruce became Batman and how the Joker came to be and how the Joker was just some guy. Well, I learned his real name. What? I don't care. And so Martha goes to the real Joker of the Flashpoint universe who didn't become the Joker because she became the Joker. So who it became of the guy who would be Joker? Well, he survived and was a janitor at Wayne Casinos and has a wife and a son, just like in The Killing Joke and in Three Jokers. Right. And his name is Jack Oswald White. I don't think he meant for it to be a White Stripes reference, <laughs> but like... It is Jack White, though. It is Jack White, though, but it's not, uh, it's not Anthony, it's Oswald. Okay. Okay. And also, yeah, redundant Oswalds. You already have a main DC Batman villain whose name is Oswald. Well, yeah, why would you... Why would you have redundant Oswalds? This just triggers something in me. I have a real problem with comic book redundancies, and so I'm just like, ah! But, that's yeah. Like, that's like if you named uh, him Jack... Uh, Aobard White. <laughs> right, like, yeah. Why? That is too specific. It's so name. specific. Or, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. Someone was, you, at some point you must no. thought, oh, wait, there's already an Oswald. Jack Harvey White. Where it's like, <laughs> fuck you. There's already two main characters in the DC universe in the Gotham City pantheon <laughs> whose name is Harvey. You can't have another Harvey. Right. It's like, well, now we got two Oswalds, but one of them is middle name, it doesn't matter. And so she is like, it's so fucking funny to me. I left him alone, and I made oh. sure he wasn't in the casino when it exploded. Okay. And you're like, okay, fine. But fine. like, great. So John's at some like, point hey, in this world, when you die, he can become the Joker still. Uh, maybe is that how it works? Because like, he doesn't die. There has so, to be a Joker, apparently. Well, it, it, in this, <laughs> we're just like Jeff Johns is saying, like, all right, you fuckers didn't like my three Jokers. Well, here's his real name. <laughs> what? No, <laughs> no, that's his real name in this. 
Flashpoint. Well, yeah. No. yeah, which is the timeline. Yeah, because they're everyone names. has an analog. Everyone is this. This is the timeline. Yeah, their names don't change. Their the names, names don't are change. The their names may not change. They don't. So far, they haven't. Yeah. But anyone could say that this isn't real. One hundred percent. And is, I well, hope they do true. soon. Yeah. Because I think that that's repugnant. I don't want the Joker's well, name. No one does. Jeff Johns is the only one who even cares that the Joker has a name yeah. and that it could, will be revealed right. one day. Like, He's the only one who was like, "Oh, there's three. Yeah. And actually, uh, Killing Joke is real, and it happened, and uh, Jenny didn't die, actually. They, they yeah. live in Alaska. Like, fuck you! It's, I didn't ask, man. I didn't ask. So, uh, she fights Batman while she explains who the Joker is for no good reason, because Thomas Wayne couldn't care less who the Joker is. Right. So, uh, <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. But she explains, How does like, this have anything to do with our son and our world? <laughs> Nothing. It huh? doesn't. What? No? Oh. But I listened to the ramblings of a crazy person for, like, days and right. it just drove me insane well but it made her angry the idea that like he like the joker is like bruce's worst enemy in the real world mm -hmm. but in this world the joker is a family man who's happy and he gets to keep his kid and we don't oh. that's fucked so i'm gonna make sure he keeps his family by keeping him alive wait that makes no sense well just it's a big joke but also we're gonna go back in time we're gonna fuck everything up right. you and me husband and wife i built thanks to all that chicanery with clockwork killing and whatnot right our own time, time machine. machine yeah i had to kill eobard thawne to like learn how he traveled through time Except and use that doesn't. knowledge to build a thing that even looks though exactly like one of the fucking time yeah Q, well that's time spheres that the time lords use that's what time machines look like yeah. Yeah, but remember. it also looks like a snow globe which, which is the thing that we're in, so why would it look like that? Because we're in it. themes. It should look like a snowman. It's like, that's, our, that, that's not themes. No. Theming is not visual cues. It's and, like poetry, it rhymes. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's hacky. <laughs> Martha's like, all right, Thomas, let's get in the fucking time machine. We're going to go back in time. We're going to go back to when Bruce was killed. We're going to get shot and die and end this and then unmake it and, and fix this reality. Except what she doesn't know, Wait, what nobody what? knows. That's what his plan was the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I, why did you just let him use Barry Allen? Why she, did you have to kill Barry she Allen? She trust those other guys. And she wanted him to die. Like, they want, they need, <laughs> we need to die. I uh, thought she wanted to go back in time and save her child and just all be a family. No. Why did she kill Joe Chill first? Right, no. She, well, because he's already dead. But uh, she's like, no, we're going we're gonna to die because we both deserve to. Mm. And we're going to unmake this reality. But I couldn't trust the time people. I can't trust you to go up. They might go off book. They might go rogue. They might fuck things up. Like uh, you. See. Right. Like you do all the time. But them fucking around in the snow globe and doing that is upsetting and fucking up hyper time, which is causing hyper time to smash into the omniverse, right. which is causing trouble here. And it's all Bruce Wayne's fault because he made the snow globe reality. Right. Like this shouldn't exist. Thomas right. Wayne needs to die. Thomas None of us Wayne should be here having this conversation. Yeah, we need to preserve <laughs> the divine continuity. Or the DC. I saw that what? earlier and I hated it. What? So I guess, so it's, it sort of makes sense that if she was to go, if she was to succeed, it would cause a problem. Yeah. Because There's she already no exists timeline. simultaneously with the real timeline that she's trying to now create. Well, and this is not the timeline. Right. You don't, this, yeah, you're, you're, when you go back in time and do that, you're going to unmake yourselves and then there'll be nothing right. because there's no original timeline to go back to. Right. This is the new reality here. They don't know they're separate. Right. So right. it's like, it would be like if you're the cowboy planet. You can't go back in time and make it so we're not cowboys anymore. <laughs> That's what you are. There's no, there's no original reality underneath the table. Like, we were always cowboys. <laughs> so You were born as... The cowboy planet. Yes. You always have been and always will be. Yeah, you can't go that back and make function. cowboys not relevant anymore <laughs> lest you like, unmake yourselves. Yeah. Cosmically, that's all you are. What if we just didn't go are. west? Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> no, you'll try. You'll go back and something will stop you from, yeah. like, undoing the old westification of the <laughs> your reality. Precisely. So Rip Hunter shows up in Batman's Batcave and he's like, I'm going to fuck up everything. I'm gonna, you're going to fuck everything up, Batman. And Batman's like, I'm not going to let my father die again. You're in my house now. Let's do this. Uh, you're in my house, bitch. I'm willing yes. to cause the destruction of everything yes, or whatever's going to happen. Yes, just to make happen. sure my father doesn't die again. And the, the, the idea is that, like, this is happening concurrently. Like, right. the, the, the globe is causing hyper time to fuck up with the omniverse or whatever. And, uh, you know, 
because of Thomas and Martha fucking around and getting getting dangerously close to doing the thing they're not supposed to be doing. Right, and and don't forget the uh, the uh, there's going to be invasion. There's oh, an invasion yeah. coming inside the snow globe. Oh, that, from uh, yeah, from from the Superman's, Kryptonians. The Kryptonians are coming. That is all. That's also coming. That's also happening, but like. <laughs> Who cares? Also, the planet is screwed because Atlantis and Themyscira are oh, at war, yeah, also. and the entire planet's about to be obliterated. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that snow globe is bad. That, that snow globe should not exist. It is bedlam in this globe, yes. Yeah, uh, Batman's wrong. <laughs> it should be destroyed. Yeah, well, he didn't also, count on his father <laughs> rejecting the reality, and them being like, the, the Time Lords being like, he's going to reject the reality. Like, he knows that he's in a fake reality. Like he, he knows he shouldn't exist because yeah. if he exists, yeah. you don't. But he thinks he's back in time and he doesn't know he's like, he should be in the multiverse, but he, what, what Jeff- Maybe you should have left him a note. Yeah, like Thomas did. But what's funny is, John's needed to have this come out before the end of Dark Crisis, so they don't know the real ending to Dark Crisis which is that there's gonna be a multiverse that can accommodate the Flashpoint reality. You don't need a snow globe at all, bitch. <laughs> and you oh. know that if you waited. <laughs> no, but I wanted to do the snow globe thing. I had that idea, so yeah. it's fine. So uh, Thomas takes Martha into his arms and he smooches her <laughs> and he's like, yeah, let's like, do this. All right, all right, oh, I'm man. in. That's fucking insane, but okay. But then he's like, wait. Oh, and then everyone like simultaneously ejaculates because they're seeing Batman kiss the Joker for the first time. <laughs> Naturally, everyone's like, yes, finally. That's what I've always wanted. Yes. And he's like, wait, no, like you, you killed like Barry <laughs> Allen and all my employees at the casino. Like you blew up my casino. She's like, who cares? Nothing matters. You've been saying that for six issues. <laughs> And then Gilda shows up and she's like, yeah, let's fuck it all up. I don't want to be here. I don't want to have my face, even though I fucking did it myself. And I don't want Den to be dead. And I don't, like, uh, this. Yes, you do. You're a murderer. Yeah, but, like, I shouldn't be. Well, right. or I should be at least one of the holiday killers. But I shouldn't definitely be a Two-Face. I want Harvey to be the bad guy, not me. Uh, uh, I don't understand the invasion subplot. The reason why they're doing the Superman invasion plot at all is to punctuate Martha's conjecture that reality sucks and it should be unmade. Mm. It's like, who cares? If you are if you are a small picture person, you want it to be unmade because like, it's sad, you know, for Martha and Thomas. But right. if you're a big picture person, you want this to be unmade because the Kryptonians are coming. And right. the, you know, even though Wonder Woman killed Aquaman and that war is over, the Themyscarians are gonna take over and now we're gonna have to see the Themyscarians fight the Kryptonians, which actually now I'm thinking about it, you know, they got a war, a race of women and a race of supermen. Oh, you're gonna see them hook, to hook up. That's gonna be crazy. Who knows what's gonna happen? I kinda wanna see that now. Like, <laughs> but you don't because it's so like, bad, right? Yeah. Cause well, the world is already screwed. Yeah, all the squishy humans will be caught in, in the, their crossfire. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's the end of the world. Or like maybe the Themyscarians will stop committing war on man's world to fight against the supermen. Oh! Like, don't you want to see that? But also, like, you should be worried about it because, like, this world sucks. And then, uh, just quietly, Dexter says to Thomas, but Dr. Wayne, what will happen to me? And, t and, and Thomas goes, it'll, it'll be like you never existed. But you could tell, like, right. he's like, like, I can't uh, yeah. unmake this poor kid who didn't that's, ask for this. That's pretty horrible. I can't make this to really some... cool boy now. Well, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I made him really cool. Maybe I'm miserable, but not everyone here is. Right. And what about them? Right, they like don't what want Superman to be said. Yeah, what exactly. about them? What about the real Joker, apparently, who's living his, his best life? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So, so even though the world is fucked up, even though there's this horrible civil war happening or this war yeah. destroying the Earth, yeah. even though there is an invasion that's coming any second now. Right, literally now. Despite all that, yes. there is like little boys who don't want to not exist anymore. That's right. Yeah. Everything matters. That little boy right. is not going to exist once the Kryptonians arrive. Which is what Martha says. <laughs> well, right, she she like, doesn't say that about the Kryptonians. She goes, right. he's not gonna die. He'll have never lived. It doesn't matter. Just just get in the goddamn <laughs> time machine. And he's like, we, we didn't, he goes, we didn't have a choice to save Bruce, but now we have a choice to save this boy from his crazy mother who's going to shoot him. <laughs> and that's when Gilda just kills him anyway, but like, yeah. no, no choice. Well, then I will no definitely work. go in the time machine. But I'll go back five minutes. Oh, never mind. Uh, so <laughs> she's like, I can't choose this boy over my son. Mm. And Thomas does and jumps at Gilda. And Gilda detonates the bomb that was on the time machine she put. Oh. And so the time machine is destroyed. Which we never saw. No, but like, no. you know, that's the big surprise. <laughs> and so Gilda's like, fuck this. And she goes to kill Dexter. 
with her gun, mm -hmm. and then Martha springs in and rescues Dexter from his mother, and then takes the gun and blows Gilda away. Nice. And then says, sorry, Dexter, I realize that may have been a touch traumatizing. <laughs> What, where, where's Batman in all that? Oh, he, Why doesn't he do he, anything? He got hit by the explosion, so oh, he was like knocked okay. away, away. He's under rubble. Why was he hit by the explosion, but Martha wasn't? Wasn't she about to get in the time machine and he was not? I think she was shielded by like the, like the, the glass of the time machine. Uh, yeah, shattering okay. glass is very shielding. Yeah, I mean, it does. It is right next to her, and it yeah. forms like a little bubble around. Because exactly. it's the Joker, and the Joker has impossible luck. Luck powers, yeah. Yeah, this is this is insane. Is it? <laughs> Is it any more insane than like literally any other book we've done? <laughs> yeah. Just, the the consequences aren't consequences. Well, well yeah. they are because now they have inherited their earth. Like they live here now. There are no more time travelers and right. there's no more time machine. Right. So We're done. This is so th <laughs> this is all we got. Yeah. So this book Oh, also if we did go back in time, we would unmake all of reality like everywhere. Couldn't she right. just build another time machine though? Theoretically, she could. Yeah, but but, but Batman was getting through to her towards the end yeah, that like we like, probably shouldn't do that though. Right, and that's the thing is that like Batman's sacrifice or his, his attempt to rescue Dexter kind of shocks Martha out of her selfish quest to die and <laughs> save her son. Right. Which is in, in, in and of itself like kind of a selfish quest anyway. And it, it's like, so it also proves the point that like people can be redeemed and there's good in this world. Right. So okay. they're stuck here. Also there's a cute moment where like it starts snowing. Hmm. And as if they were in a snow globe. Yes. Right. And so they they make the right choice, yes. sort of, or Batman does, and in so doing, not only save their own reality, but all of reality. Yes. That's right. Okay. You know, Corky and Rip are like, oh, it's stabilized. Oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we don't have to destroy well, it. Well, Corky's freaking out. He's like, what's going on? What happened? And Batman goes, my father proved you both wrong. <laughs> right. What, what about your mom? Ah, she doesn't matter. He doesn't know. Right. Well, I was Bruce gonna still say, doesn't know about his mother, and well, how does he know that her his dad just proved them wrong? How does he know that it wasn't somebody else in there that because <laughs> because this because this universe revolves around my father? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> because a like, Batman knows. Well, because like the main DC universe, <laughs> this universe revolves around Batman. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> you gambled all of reality, everyone's reality, yeah. on the fact that your psycho dad was going to choose the right, make the right choice. Explain yourself. <laughs> right. And Bruce proceeds to explain that it was in the letter he left him. No, this is not a time traveling letter. It's that <laughs> the letter that we finally reveal the contents of mm. suggest that Thomas was learning that lesson already. Like during Flashpoint. He kept saying to himself that nothing matters, but the, the, the fact is that like the, 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 the words and the way in which Thomas chose to talk to his son suggested Thomas was starting to understand that like, this is the life we have and we should just go with it. Right, make the most of, make the most of it. Exactly. And we so find that- So he's like, I wasn't worried. I wasn't worried about that. That my dad was gonna go back in time and unmake reality because like, I, I got the impression that he was learning the lesson. Yes. Even though he was about to make a Barry. Even though, yeah, he literally would have if my mom, Joker, hadn't- Had murdered all murdered the speedsters Barry and time instead. travelers, yeah. yes. Well, you know, well, you're gonna you're gonna lose a few. <laughs> you gotta it was, make an omelet. It was a bit of a gamble. Oh well, yeah, no, I. Agree. But I had reason to think that it might work out. It yes. wasn't just a, a shot in the dark. It was not a total shot in the dark. Right. Uh, so okay. then we see like this is the reality now, and like they fix the clock, and Cobblepot's their butler, and they have a bat signal Yay! now. And, yeah, and <laughs> and Dexter is Robin, and no one here knows why that is because like what. <laughs> There's no precedent for that, and Batman just calls him Robin because that's what he's called in the main universe. And right. Oh, I met Robin, and so you're Robin. Yeah, and I kind of like that idea, Robin. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it's iconic. Yeah. And so Martha is now in a cell of her own in the Bat Cave that is mu much nicer than it would be in, Ar in in Arkham because she has proven that like she is crazy, but she's on her road to redemption, and I'd rather be with her and just keep you know keep that under. Under oh. observation. Does she get conjugal visits? I would assume so, based on the bed. <laughs> and so, uh... Or she just needs to sleep. Right, right. oh yeah, that's true. It, yeah, is, yeah. it looks like a twin. Yeah, that's true. 
So it's like college. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's lots of sex happening on that bed, <laughs> but it's also completely ill suited yeah. for the for the for the amount of uh, activity it's going to see. <laughs> also, it's inappropriate because there is a giant glass window, <laughs> just like Robin is the uh, roommate. <laughs> yeah, R Robin will see a sock on the clock that will say, "Don't come in here." And so yeah, they 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 you know, they 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 spring into action. Meanwhile. Uh, the Kryptonians are coming. Oh, yes. We still have to deal with that problem. Yep. Oh, wow. Well, this is really sucks. Well, we, it's just uh, like... We don't want to be here. The world is in peril, and Batman and Robin will have to save it. You know? Okay. And it's cute, because there's a moment where, um, you know, they're going to go out in, into battle, and Martha says, his shoelace is untied. So Thomas ties it. Except and she's she not goes, a joke. She doesn't, like, you know... Boom. No. Right. She's behind uh, glass. But she's like, she goes, have fun. And kill some Kryptonians! Blah! You're like, oh, okay. She's still got a lot of work. To she's do. still got a lot. Of, but also, you know, this Thomas Wayne like murders people too. Yeah. So like, yeah, I will. No, you got it, honey. <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's also them. Yeah. And so the the Time Lords all get together and they're talking about like what an asshole Bruce Wayne is. And so we're not going to tell him the dark secret about the real Martha Wayne that Bruce Wayne doesn't know about that Jeff Johns will inevitably reveal in some other future story. Uh, as a punishment for his crimes of being a dipshit. They had like a bunch of characters that were pulled from history and put into time capsules that have been freed and they're all retconned by Jeff Johns to have always existed uh, in the silver and golden age for a change in which uh, we reveal like all <laughs> oh, these- so no one cares. Right, so like, you know, Aquaman came from the silver age. Well, there's a golden age Aquaman. What's his deal? Well, Jeff Jones will tell you about that. Well, but what? Because they were distracted yes, by they were busy. Nevi needing to Stop deal Batman. with Batman's pocket universe. Yes. All these other characters from time are like showing up. That's right. No, they escaped. They, they escaped. escaped from being like imprisoned or held back or murdered or whatever these people do to keep control of the timeline. Yeah, That's apparently, right. Apparently, they need like constant surveillance. Yeah, it's just it's just. It, yeah. it is the fucking Loki thing. Yes. Where it's like, well, without us, it goes to haywire. Yeah, but does their freedom mean that we are now retconning hypertime and reality? Right. And the answer is yes, we are. We're totally retconning it. Uh, but do they remember it? You know, do they remember it as it always was? Or as it had been and then was now always? So then it wraps up with a little epilogue drawn by Gary Frank in a nine panel grid. And you're like, oh, you son of a bitch. Look uh, at that, it's nostalgia perfume on the ground. Oh. And Bubastis is a little bigger now. The baby Bubastis from Doomsday Clock. And oh. they proceed to explain <laughs> Go that away. Cleopatra Pack, who was set up in Doomsday Clock as a little girl, is now 16. And she is a super character named Nostalgia. And she is looking for the Watchman. A-N, not E-N. A character called the Watchman. Okay. And it's probably Clark, the adopted son of Dr. Manhattan. And maybe that's who Barry er, er, Eobard was running from. Or maybe he was running for Dr. Manhattan. Who knows? But we do know that Clark is important. Maybe he'll be a character. Maybe he'll be a superhero. Maybe he'll be Night Owl 3. Yeah. Well, it's probably more like he'll be Superman. Oh, right. Because he's Clark. Because... Watchmen is terrible because Superman doesn't exist. Right, so we gotta fix it by putting him in by there. Putting Superman. Watchmen wouldn't be so dire and cynical if Superman existed in that universe. <laughs> if you hate Watchmen and you're the COO of DC, here's what you do. You give the rights back. <laughs> you give the rights back to Alan Moore. Yeah. They, no, it'll still exist. You, no, but you, if you divest yourself from Watchmen. Right, remove it. Let, remove it. Let let Moore do whatever the hell he wants with it. Yeah, then, it's not part of your world anymore. It's not part of your world. You don't have any control over it. Yeah. Moore can do whatever he wants with it, which is probably nothing. That's right. But you then have ingratiated yourself with Alan Moore. Maybe he'll come back and write a couple more stories for you. <laughs> yeah, the shareholders won't let us do that. There's too much money to be made from from selling. sell from sales of Watchmen, yep. which is probably true. But like, it's, it's better than doing sequels to it for no good reason. <sighs> yeah. So Flashpoint Beyond, sequel to Watchmen, sequel to Doomsday Clock, sequel to Flashpoint. And I guess technically like a sequel to Dark Crisis because it does tell you what happens at the end of it. Right. It says it. And, and prequel 
to whatever the next thing whatever is. he's doing next yeah and, and it's also kind of like a companion piece to three jokers because it tells you the true name of the joker oh yes you know in goodness. this in this in this in this flashpoint story right in the the sequel to flashpoint this unnecessary <laughs> the Maybe. name of the joker is revealed mm -hmm. Maybe he realized how stupid that was. And he's like, I'm just going to throw it into this I mean, random book. If it's stupid, nobody you don't cares. do anything with it. No, if it's stupid, you <laughs> wouldn't have done no, it. No, i got to yeah. pay it off. N nobody asked. You're not paying anything off. No, I, well, I implied that he had a name or something. No. Oh, didn't I mean, someone whisper the name of oh, yeah. Joker well, no, to Batman was, or some okay, shit? No, it was, the, it was the Mobius chair. Uh, oh. Batman asked what the Joker's real name was. And, oh, it said there were three of and them. And it said there were three of them. Yeah. I mean, like we never Yeah, but seen. no, but what is his real name, though? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, no, well, Mobius tried. I, that's not what I well, want. Well, no, and Batman already found out. That's the other thing. Is it, it's funny because like everybody likes to talk about this. Um, the Mobius chair. You know, like Batman asked, "Who killed my parents?" The chair says, "Joe Chill." He's like, "Okay, good. I was just testing the chair. What's the true name of the Joker?" Because like that's what I would ask. Right. And the chair answers, but we don't see what it says. And he's, "No, that's impossible." What we have to assume is that the chair says there are three of them, or which one. Mm. And that would blow Batman's mind. Right. What we then find out in Three Jokers is that Batman always knew Joker's real name. That's right. And facilitated the witness protection program disappearance of the Joker's wife and son. That's right. So Batman already knew the Joker's real name <laughs> and was just using it as a way of testing that again. He was just doing two tests and the second test revealed the two other Jokers he didn't know about. And that's- And that's when they the, attack from the right, side. That's the, yeah, the ones, the two Jokers you didn't even know were there. That is the secret of the Mobius chair and the true origins of Dark Side War? Right. <laughs> is that what happened? Right. Uh, it's been so yeah, long. But I, I never got around to saying the name of the Joker right, that like, Batman knew the name right, of already. Right, but no one asked you to tell us it. What's the real name of the Joker? It's Jack White. That's impossible. <laughs> the singer from the White Stripes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's such a boring, stupid name. Why would that? Why would you even reveal that? Right. It, oh, it's almost like that's really disappointing. You mean it's nobody? <laughs> right. Yeah. Of course it's nobody. Yeah. Who would it be? Who cares? That's what the, the chair should have been like, who cares? Dumped him out of it. Yeah, it, just some guy. He's who some dare, guy. Who, who, how dare you ask me that? You have access to like infinite energy and technology and power, and you ask me the name of some piece of shit in white makeup? Yeah. Dump. <laughs> <laughs> no, there should be a spring in it. Just boing. Yeah, it's an ejector seat. <laughs> when you ask the Mobius chair dumbass questions, like what's the Joker's real name? This book is available in the comments down below for you to purchase if you want to pick up a copy. It is uh, it is loaded with references and Easter eggs and cameos and winks and nods and middle fingers and all kinds of other fun stuff that you might find uh, entertaining. And way too many instances of TikTok. Well, yeah, it's a clockwork killer. We're using that as theming. But uh, that being said, no, it's pandering. That is, oh, you got me there. But it is uh, I, I, I honestly when it's when it's being read, it is a pretty fun read despite right. everything associated with it and its implications. Right. Uh, but on its own, you're like, oh, it's kind of fun. Like, it's a fun reveal. Yeah. Well, if you care about the Flashpoint universe, oh, it's it's great. Yeah, and I'm Which shocked. Which apparently exists now. Yeah, now it exists now over it exists. there. And what's funny is like, it could exist in the multiverse, there. but it doesn't. It exists in a fucking globe on, bat on a shelf in Batman's Batcave. Yeah, it's like the Lost City of Candor. Oh, we gotta get these two together. I kind of like that. I like the idea that Batman is his own Candor. That's kind of cool. It's just a reality where my dad is a complete fucking murderer and a psychopath and Krypton is messing everything up. <laughs> yeah, that's neat and sad, but... That, well, if Clark gets one, I get one too. That's, that, that should be on the book cover, just... That's neat and sad, comic pop. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Thoughts? It looks really cool. Yeah, the art's really good. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of... Um, Fucking Grant Morrison, Earth Two shit. Yeah. Where it's like, who? Wait, who are these fucking people? Right. And it's like you keep waiting for like your Superman and your Batman to show up, yeah. and like for the book to be about them. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and maybe with the, and, and it's just like, you, no, it's still, it's just more Earth Two. What, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Like yeah. that's what this is. Right. And it's like, if I liked Flashpoint and I liked that world, I would think this was fucking awesome. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Because like, like in that world, world, it is awesome. Flashpoint. You're insane. 
<laughs> well, it's just like it's no, else worlds, right? Like it's, it. like yeah. a, it's just another. Like a, it's like a what if? Yeah, it's like a what if or an else worlds. I'm yeah, sorry, but I should rephrase just... that. If you would rather have the Flashpoint universe than <laughs> well, uh, than this universe, yeah, yeah the that real sucks. universe. Uh, yeah. Yes, you're insane. Yeah, because yeah. it, its whole per point is that it's like fucked up and yeah, dark. it shouldn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Like, why would anyone see that? Because it's fucked up. Yeah. Like, oh. So it's just like it's one of the most elaborate. Well uh, constructed, Else and worlds. fleshed out Elseworld stories of all time. Yeah, yeah, it's way more deep and has a lot more lore and mythology than the one where Superman is a communist, <laughs> or the one where Batman is a Christian crusader, right. or the one where the Kents are cowboys. Yeah, like, oh no. Yeah, if you really wanted your Elseworlds to. So to to breathe. Well, if you did, then you should demand more of them and not from the dark multiverse, which this fucking belongs in. <laughs> it does. Which it isn't. Because there's hope. Well, it's, no, it's true, because it doesn't end that badly. Yeah. Because, like, this is Watchmen tied into well, stuff. So it's not dark enough to be the dark multiverse. There's it hasn't in ended it. horribly yet. You don't yet. understand. Uh, Superman's here. Right. So a cow cow And he's not a monster. Be? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think they called it Flashpoint Beyond? It's sort of referencing Batman, Batman Beyond, Beyond, but it's yeah. nothing like Batman no. Beyond. No, well, because we're going beyond the Flashpoint. Like, we are finally moving forward from it. Yeah, I thought they were going it, back to the it's Flashpoint. It's incidental that it happens to also evoke the Batman Beyond moniker. I see. And yeah, they are going back, but they're also going forward. It's about, it's about moving on and going forward. What are you going to call... The next the, one. Well, no, what are you going to call the Flashpoint Batman, Batman Beyond? Beyond book? You know what? You know what? does upset me about the end of this book. Yeah. It sets up no fewer than three separate fucking things yeah. that could come out of this. Well, you could do a sequel to this book where yep. the, you deal with the uh, invasion of the Kryptonians. Yes, the Flashpoint sequel. You could do a book about the characters that are shown from the Golden Age and shit that are, they coming are out. Which I guess they are definitely doing that. Yep. And you could do this Watchmen thing. Yes. This thing with the future of the, the Watchmen universe. Don't forget the Batman story about the secret history of Martha... Wayne. Oh yeah, that also. Yeah, this sets up four different books. No, it is it is employment insurance. Yeah. Happy New Year, everybody! Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next time, as always, with another episode of Back Issues in the New Year. I'm excited for so many books. I got a crazy ass list. You know, we did this one, and it literally came out like less than a year ago, and yet like there's so many more to come. And uh, so much more context to provide. And, Yay. And, and so, so many, many more, more questions. So many to more answer. questions to answer. So many well, more frustrating reveals yeah, and unnecessary but some, shenanigans. There is some celebration to be had, and I'm looking forward to having it all with yeah. all of you. Do 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 See you next week. That that fucking deflation. <laughs> Sounded like a fucking brass band. It was weird. Amazing.